Hey guys, what's up? I'm Rohit Kumar, host on Intellect Digest, and in this video, I'm gonna give you my review of the ASUS Zenfone Max with reasons to buy and not buy it towards the end of the video. Keep watching. I'll start with the box contents and with the phone, you get the phone itself, documents, USB OTG cable, standard USB charging cable, and one ampere charger in the box. Although we are a bit disappointed by the absence of a fast charger here. Next, I'll talk about looks and design. And this phone does look stunning. The one we have is in black and it comes with this champagne gold ring all around it. It looks very classy and rich. With fox leather finish at back, it looks very sophisticated and nice. It comes with Gorilla Glass 4 protection at front, which makes it super tough and strong and resistant to scratches. In terms of design and appearance, it looks very classy, in fact better than its price segment. Talking of SIM card options, the back is removable but the battery is not. There are two SIM card slots under the hood and there is also a separate micro SD card slot for memory expansion. Giving you a quick overview of the phone, on the right side you get the power wake up key followed by the volume rocker on top of it and both keys are slightly textured and finished in metal. On top there is 3.5mm audio port, left side is clean and bottom gets primary microphone hole and charging port. On the rear you get a 13 megapixel shooter with dual tone, dual LED flash, secondary mic hole for noise cancellation just above the camera module and towards the right side of the camera module there is a laser autofocus sensor which helps you focus very quickly. There is ASUS and Zenfone branding and a speaker grill towards the bottom on the rear. On the front there is a 5.5 inch 720p high definition display which looks sharp and rich and below the display are three touch capacitive buttons which are not backlit. On top of the display there is a 5 megapixel front facing camera, standard earpiece and some sensors. Talking of the display quality, it is rich, sharp, contrast levels are good, display is bright enough when turned to full brightness and has ability to change color temperature so you can tune it to the way you like it. The video playback experience on this display is really impressive and here is a clip for you. To start with, in terms of design, the Xperia Z5 Premium Dual looks like an elder sibling of the Xperia Z5. It comes with a larger 5.5 inch display compared to 5.2 of the Z5. It comes with overall similar design when it comes to button play. Talking of audio playback quality, the speakers are just about average and not very impressive in our opinion. Next up, camera. The 13 megapixel rear shooter does an excellent job outdoors. It is very sharp and fast to focus, takes very good images in normal outdoor lighting conditions. There is also a manual mode on offer which gives you ability to focus, control the ISO, change the shutter speed, etc. The front facing camera is also decent and takes good quality pictures, however detailing could have been better. The pictures taken with the rear facing camera in indoors however tend to get grainy when the light reduces. But in normal light conditions you would not face any troubles with the rear facing camera. The videos taken with the front as well as rear facing camera come out fine and here are some samples. This is a sample video recorded handheld with the rear facing camera and you can see the changes in exposure and how the camera is reacting to it. You can also judge the stabilization of shots here handheld front facing video recording done with the front facing camera and you can see the quality of image and when i move the light changes and you can see the reaction of the camera to exposure talking of some important practical and useful features there is usb otg support and taking it a step further with a 5000 milliamp battery underneath this phone can reverse charge any other phone. What it means is that with USB OTG cable, you can connect any other phone to this or a USB device and the other device will start charging using the battery of the ASUS Zenfone Max. That's amazing. So Zenfone Max is not only a phone, but a power bank in itself. 
On software side, it uses Zen UI, which is the software that you would find on the Zenfone series. It comes with some extra applications and system apps, which includes Auto Start Manager. There is Backup app. There are some special gestures or shortcuts when you swipe up from bottom. There is theme support, some pre-installed games and utilities. Which brings us to the point of blotware. If you are bothered by extra applications, you will be bothered a lot on this phone. Next up, battery. Battery is in fact the USP of this phone. With a 5000 milliamp battery on board, which is approximately twice the size of battery that you would find on a conventional smartphone, it gives you 10 plus hours of screen on time. That's a lot to demand from a sub 10,000 rupees phone. For a normal user, it will easily last for two full days. Talking of performance, this is where this phone is not very beefy. It is part with a Snapdragon 410 chipset, which is 1.2 GHz quad-core CPU, which is moderate at best when it comes to performance. On Antutu, it scores around 25,000 mark. It comes with 2 gigs of RAM, which is good enough for normal day-to-day -day applications, but it is not suited for heavy applications and games. It comes with 16 gigs of internal memory, out of which 10.5 GB is user available. If you are a gamer and planning to buy a phone for playing games, this is not the phone for you. It can play moderate games with good quality and we tested the Frontline Commando version too. It played it really well, but this phone is not meant for very heavy gaming because there is not enough RAM and not enough CPU power to push the heaviest of games. Talking of value for money, it certainly is a very high value for money considering that it gives you a very good design, a large battery, good quality display and good software experience at a budget of less than 10,000 rupees. So the reasons which make it to the list to buy this phone include battery life, design, superior build quality, display quality, reverse charging capabilities and good set of cameras. However, the reasons to not buy include heavy weight, moderate audio quality and lack of gaming power. If you can overlook these minor perks, it's a really good phone to live with under 10,000 rupees with an excellent battery life and capability to charge your other phones and USB devices on the go. So it is a big thumbs up from us and you can pick up one for yourself at the best buy price included in the description section below where you can pick up one. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up by pressing the like button below and for more such videos, stay subscribed by pressing the red subscribe button. I hope to see you on my next video. This is your host Rohit Khurana signing off. Thanks for watching.